What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the LA Soccer Hub Show. My name is Gio Garcia. Today's Monday, May 31st, the last day of May. Long month, but hey, we're finally here. We're going to move on to June. There's a lot that happened this past weekend, you know, LA Galaxy, the Cali Classical. But before we get into that, I'm going to introduce my guest. We got Eli Lesser of This Week in MLS. Eli, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. You know, this weekend we really proved that SoCal is better than Nor NorCal. So that's what really matters here. Yeah, it was, it was a great game. I, I know I ran into you. And I should also mention uh, Damian Cal Calhoun is also going to be joining us uh, in like about 10, 15 minutes. He, he had to take care of some personal stuff first, but he's also going to be joining us uh, halfway through that. So, but yeah, but there was also big, big, big stuff over the weekend. Um, yesterday, Cruz Azul one Liga MX after 23 years. Uh, I think that's it's, it's pretty big. You know, so I, I just wanted to hit on, hit on that. I know you don't necessarily cover Liga MX, but what are your thoughts on Cruz Azul winning after 23 years and the curse that they've had? I mean, you always love to see a team break in a curse. I'm hoping that will happen with my Clippers this year in the NBA. And, you know, it's nice to, to not see a team like Club America or Chivas win teams that often play MLS clubs. And there's been some beef between those guys in the past. So Cruz Azul, I have no problem with. So I'm, I'm happy to see them win it. <laughs> yeah, right. They, they, they no, no problem with them. I think it was also big, right? So just mm -hmm. a quick little story. So my dad is a Cruz Azul fan and my, mm -hmm. and I grew up uh, watching Cruz Azul. I haven't kept up with Liga MX like the last, you know, I want to say like five to six years, you know, just been like more into the NBA and stuff like that. But like them winning that after everything they've been through, just the ups and down and, you know, essentially choking. I think it's a big thing, and it just it takes me back. Of I remember when when they won. I think back in 1997, or whatever, whenever it was, it was like Carlos Hermosillo, and I remember watching that final, and I was like, I want to be like that guy because they won it. I didn't know that was going to be the last time they were going to win it after so long, but I, I I just felt like that was a cool moment, so I kind of watched it, and it was like, uh, you know, just going, it just took me back. You know, was what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought it was a very special moment. You see all of Mexico City, uh, you know, getting excited, you know, lighting cars on fire, getting a little too crazy. But that typically happens, you know, you know, when they win the championship. Another team that won uh, is Chelsea. Chelsea won the Champions League. They beat Man City. I was 1-0. I was at the Bank of California watching that. What were your thoughts on the Champions League? Well, you know, as a Manchester United fan, I really did not have <laughs> anyone to root for. I, I, I wanted both teams to lose in a way. However... First of all, it was great to see an American on both teams. Obviously, Zach Steffen wasn't going to play that match, but still to have two Americans in the Champions League final is absolutely huge. Christian Pulisic getting on and being there for the final whistle. I mean, th this is monumental for U.S. soccer. And of course, me being this week in MLS, I'm going to look at this through the U.S. soccer lens. Um, but it was it was great to see match as a whole, not the most fun to watch, just a one nil. But, you know, um, there was a lot riding on this. And shout out to Chelsea for for lifting, I think, their first Champions League since 2012. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, you you hit on on a lot of lot, a lot of great points right there, right? Uh, to me, is that that was the biggest thing, right? Uh, Christian Pulisic uh, coming in, right, being being the first American to, to play in a final. He almost scored too. He was mm -hmm. so he was so close to scoring, which I which I thought that would, that would have been amazing, right? But and then at the end, you see you see Christian Pulisic, you know, with his dad, his mom, and the, you know that little, little video that went viral. Mm -hmm. You know, his dad moves the gold medal or the medal over his neck so he can show he can show the U.S. You know, and I thought that was a very special moment. I think I think he went on to say that, like, you know, he did that, you know, because he wanted to show everybody in America the the young kids moving up, and I, and I think that's that's gonna you know motivate and inspire a lot of kids because hey, now you have someone that's done it at the biggest level, mm -hmm. you know, out, all right outside of the World Cup, but at the biggest level there and, and to, to show that I, I thought it was very special for Christian Pulisic for the U.S. men's national team and for everybody involved like hey look not only is a ta talent starting to go to Europe but that we can also win it too right mm -hmm. absolutely and I think you know with the Americans coming up through the ranks in Germany and even in the Premier League you know we, we might be seeing an American lift that trophy again and maybe score a game-winning goal because you know sure Pulisic didn't score in this finals match but he did score in some of the other Champions League matches in key moments for them so just the way that we saw an American contribute at the highest level that was inspiring for sure.
Yeah, no, it was good. And then Jose in the chat, Jose Gonzalez in the chat says, Man City will be back two cups out of four. Not bad. Uh, Man City's a hell of a team. You know, Pep Guardiola, they, I mean, they were favored to win. Unfortunately, it, it didn't go that way. But I, I, I agree with that. I, the only thing I felt like bad for Man City was Kuno Guerrero, right? He, mm-hmm. he, you know, that was his final game with, with Man City. And, you know, obviously he wanted to go ride the wave out, you know, the right way, winning the championship. But unfortunately, that didn't happen today. He officially signed with Barcelona. You know, I saw that all over Instagram. So, I mean, he he's going to a great club. He's probably going to be there with Messi. We'll, we'll still have to see if Messi's going to stay or not. But it's very exciting. Talking about another American, Sebastian Legette. You know, Sebastian Legette scored for the U.S. national team uh, this weekend against Sweden. Um I mean, he, he just finds ways to score goals. He, and it's like he's been a staple. No matter what game or what game he plays, he's always scoring goals. What are your thoughts on Sebastian Legette? It's funny because I'd argue that he is the most consistent goal scorer for the U.S. men's national team. I think he scored like four in four of his last four matches for them, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But uh, he, he's been electric and, you know, because he's on an MLS club, a lot of the Euro snobs are always saying, oh my God, the USMNT won't be that good because an MLS player is starting. However, Sebastian Legette is integral to this men's national team and what Greg Berhalter wants to do. And he keeps proving why he belongs there. And yeah, he should be starting for the national team because he is the most consistent producer. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, scoring goals is scoring goals. Where you're scoring for the national team or the club team, those don't come easy. And he's and he's scoring them against different national teams. He's going up against right. So I mean, and he's just finding a way. It looks like right where where he's playing on the, on the attacking mid side. It really seems to fit him. I know with the Galaxy, he, they tend to move him around, but and I and I know there's a lot of competition and a lot of other opportunities that Greg Vanny has. But I think that's really. If he can find a way with, with the club team, with Galaxy, and to, I don't know, Greg Vanny is able to keep him there. That's where we really see him thrive. And that's what that that's the position he plays with the U.S. men's national team. Now, we're just hoping that that can continue with the other Galaxy, correct? No, of course. Um, but I do think what he's asked to do is definitely very different. And as you noted, um, you know, he's not looking to score like he is with the national team when he's with the Galaxy. But, you know, the fact that he can find those spots, I think Greg Vanny should definitely take advantage of it. Yeah, no. And he wasn't available for the Galaxy this weekend. But, I mean, they didn't, they didn't necessarily miss a beat with them. And it's, it's good to also see that, you know, right, when a piece like uh, Sebastian Leggett, who's so – crucial to this team it makes makes uh, makes an impact when when he goes away and plays for the national team it's always it's always a positive and that's what you want to see um so yeah so obviously let, let, let's get into it all right the, the cali classical you were there i was there it was exciting there wasn't that, that many fans i think it was because because it was memorial weekend i didn't i don't I don't, I don't know unless I, my eyes were lying to me. I felt like there was more fans at the austin fc game than to this one um did you did you feel the same way or no yeah, but may, I, I mean, I, that didn't cross my mind at all. Um, I, I just assumed it was because of the seating capacity. Um, I, I wish we could have been at full capacity for this match because this match really required it. And even though I don't want to like love San Jose fans, like I miss having like their supporter section filled because that makes the rivalry matches so much more fun. And I know when LA plays Seattle on June 19th that there's going to be a boatload of Sounders fans marching in um, with that full capacity. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but yeah, I didn't really notice anything too, too, too intense um, or any difference. Yeah. The, the, the only way I, the only reason I say that is because when I got to the, to the, uh, to the stadium last week, the, the previous game or the last home game, I believe it was against Austin. Uh, I got there like I made the mistake because like, the game was like at 12 or something like that. And I made the mistake to get there like 30 minutes before. And I was like fighting the traffic to go into the parking lot. So this time I was like, all right, I, you know, I went, I saw Champions League at the Bank of California. Then I went there and I was like, let me get here two hours early because it's the Cali, Cali Classico. So either I got there too early or whatever. But nevertheless, it, it, was, it was still a very exciting game and, and so much that, that we saw. Right. So obviously the Galaxy got the one only lead. Um, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, you know, it's like the thing about going into this game, right? It's, it's a rivalry, it's a classical and that, and you want to see which players are going to step up for the LA galaxy. What, what were your thoughts going into this game? Going into it? 
Galaxy have to win this one uh, because, you know, they're coming off a pretty terrible loss um, in Portland, 3-0. And also, in recent years, San Jose has kind of had the Galaxy's number in this rivalry. And, you know, now that the Galaxy are looking like a bounce, like they, 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 they look like a resurrected franchise, I think one of the next steps for them was first to beat LAFC, which they did, check and then beat San Jose, check. And now we're going to face the Sounders next, and I think that's the next big test, you know, after losing the first one, see, playing them on our home turf. I think that will be huge. Um, but no, 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 we, this was a must win for me because it's all about the bragging rights, and I know Galaxy fans want to joke around and always say, like, the Cali Classico is absolutely the Galaxy's biggest rivalry. I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say that, but, you know, the, the team... Uh, the the team and the fans love saying that and you know proving that they were the better team is always a nice thing yeah i mean they they they, they, they got the dub so right now they are the best team in all of california right because that, that's the mm-hmm. battle so let, let's look look the, look at the lineup that greg vanny came out with he started jonathan bond obviously a, a goal Dorajo at the right daniel stairs nick Dupuy, uh, center backs uh, Jorge Leofania, obviously no change there. Jonathan Dos Santos, and you had Sasha Kletschman in. And then you start out, out at right, he had Dunbar in the attacking mid. He had Efrain Alvarez, Kevin Cabral out in the wing, and then Chicharito. Um, you know, it's good to see Sasha Kletschman get, get the start, uh, Efrain Alvarez get the start, and, and Jonathan Dos Santos. What were your thoughts on the midfield uh, with the Galaxy in this game? I personally have never understood nor enjoyed uh, where Sasha Kleshten has been started for the Galaxy because he's been started alongside Jonah as like a number eight when he's always been a number 10 for me. So that that I didn't really enjoy that much. And also with recent Galaxy matches, I've loved Sasha coming off the bench at, at like the 45th, you know, just at halftime because he's looked excellent in those spots. But he... he looked good for me this match um i think i saw him move a lot better than he has in most of the matches he's played for the galaxy and that was great i saw him running back after the galaxy lost possession and trying to make tackles and get the ball back so that was great um i don't really i think when obviously when legit is back he'll start there um and maybe sasha can move to the 10 or back to the bench but I wasn't mad that he started Cameron Dunbar. I was excited to see start. It was a bit of a surprise for me. I thought Cabral and Grand Seer were both going to start, not uh, Cabral taking Grand Seer's spot. But Dunbar is someone who really earned the the trust of the fans after that Austin match. I remember he came on and he, he, or no, uh, sorry, in the LAFC match where he came on and he displayed so much effort and intensity and he really became like a a hometown hero because he is the Carson guy um so I was very happy to see him and I I thought he looked fine in this match didn't really notice him because where I was sitting I I saw more of the left flank and we'll get to Kevin Cabral very soon um but yeah I I I like this Galaxy lineup I don't uh, this is obviously not our first team this is not our first choice lineup but uh no no real complaints yeah, no, no, and it did a job. And Alex Ruiz brings up a great por- point. I'm surprised Sasha Kleston played a full 90. I- I'm surprised too. I thought he was going to go maybe 45 to 60 minutes and then Victor Vasquez or, or someone else was going to come in for Sasha. But uh, yeah, I mean, that is a great point. Sasha Kleston went, went full 90 when I thought, you know, at most was 45, maybe a 60 minute player. But he ended up playing the, the full game. And, and that's what you want to see out, out of your veteran, right? Out of your veteran leader, you know who you who you expected that you you sometimes you're going to get a full 90 minutes and it's kind of out of necessity too because all the changes uh the injuries obviously we talked about grand sir you know cameron dunbar also has looked good grand sir was was dealing with that well, i believe the ankle mm-hmm. injury you know so and it's good to see cameron dunbar because he i i feel like he's a player that he's he's earned that right to get a start obviously grand sir is the guy that's going to start but i feel like he's earned those minutes to, 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 you know, when an injury like this happens and to get started up there. Obviously, I don't think he, he necessarily had a bad game, but he, with, with Cameron Dunbar, the, you know, the effort's always going to be there. You know, he has the speed, right? And, and you know, he has, he has the, the capability of, of impacting the game uh, any, anytime he's on the pitch and he, do, and he does all the dirty work as well. And, and to your point, uh, Kevin Cabral, uh, man, I think we really got a, got a, a more of a taste of what we can expect for Kevin Cabral because I felt like, uh, obviously, he's still he's still still getting his feet wet, right? When he went to play, what was it, the Timbers? I was like, actually his first game 
right? Playing on turf and stuff. But this game, we really got to see his versatility. We really got to see his one-on-one game. And that's what we we would like for him to do more, right? Because I don't I don't know if, if against the Timbers, he, he was a little bit uh, passive, not as aggressive. But this game, he turned it on. And he almost scored, too, if it wasn't for the San Jose's earthquake defender just to, to knock the ball out. Yeah, I mean, he almost scored a, a few times in that match. There was the one that just curled wide at the post. Oh, he yeah. Yep, yep. Excellent. The individual efforts with him on the ball, with or with the ball at his feet, are just beautiful. I was sitting right there um, with that quality chance where he blew by Florian Jungworth. And he really blew by the whole midfield of the San Jose Earthquakes. It was very inspiring, but it did kind of remind me at times of, you know, Grand Sears' first couple of games where he's had the great individual efforts when it came to the final touch or the the final shot. It, it just wasn't quite there yet. But I know the second that Cabral gets his first goal, he's going to get his second. He's going to get his third. He, he's just going to get into that rhythm again. And it's just something you see a lot with young attackers it, it the hardest goal to get is always the first yeah. with your new club or with if it's your first professional which it's not for him but it's the the first goal is always the hardest and even with Chicharito you know it took him a while to get his first goal but no once he did you know he did a couple and then this season been great and I just know that Kevin Cabral is about to unleash and become the best young winger in MLS like watch out Diego Rossi because Kevin Cabral is coming. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got some shots fired. The the thing the thing that you mentioned there is um right, you we want to see him score, but I, the the thing the bigger picture for me is that he impacted the game. He showed mm-hmm. us his talent, right? Uh because I, I wasn't too concerned that he didn't score, right? You he had two opportunities, and you know, the first one was on the defender, second one, it just curled, right? It just curled, but you saw you saw the quality that he has with this first touch. You see the speed that is unmatched, that no one, no one can no defender can keep up with them. And that's what that's what you want to see. And you want to see more of if I right, if I'm LAFC, if I'm Greg Vanny. Kevin Cabral, anytime you have the bond, it's you one-on-one, go. It's it's oh it's you because I feel like nine out of ten times or ten out of ten times Kevin Cabral can beat can beat the opposing defense and he and he has that versatility. And I feel like he he ha- he should have the green light to go one on one and create opportunities for himself or for Chicharito. Right. And I think the, the only thing I think I want to see more is him and having um Chicharito understanding each other better mm-hmm. up top, but I think that's going to come with time, and, and there's no pressure. Obviously, with this two week break now, right? You you wanted it. It's unfortunate for Kevin Cabral because I, he's just he's just getting his rhythm, and he want to play. And then there's this two week break, right? But I, but I think once him and Chicharito start to start to you know understand each other better, understand where, where they want the ball. Okay, when I do this, you do that, and stuff like that. Th- this offense is really going to flourish. And with Grand Sir as well, who we should talk about him creating that goal opportunity, right? Whether it's an own goal, whatever you want to call it, that's what you want to see out of Grand Sir. That's that's what you want to see. And we finally got this game. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah. Uh, first, I want to add one more thing to the Cabral thing, because it also involves Grand Seer, is that individual talent that you were talking about with him on the ball. It's why I want to see both him and Grand Seer on the field at the same time, starting with Chicharito up top, because the difference between these wingers and the wingers that the Galaxy have had in the past is the fact that these guys They have that pace, they have the skill, and they love to go inside. You know, they don't stay out wide. We saw Cabral try to work his way around and then inside. We've seen that with Grand Seer, and I think that adds an extra level of depth to the Galaxy attack. And Grand Seer was excellent off the bench for the Galaxy. It's unfortunate that his goal was credited as an own goal for Tanner Beeson. Also, poor Tanner Beeson. I feel like he has an own goal every single match I've seen him play. (laughs) Um, But Grand Seer looked great. He also had that chance very late in the match where he had the breakaway. Unfortunately, there was a really, really good tackle from Paul Marie um, to to prevent that. But I know Grand Seer is on the verge of breaking out as well. I I was more convinced by him than I ever have been during this match. And he only made uh, like a 20-minute appearance or so. 
Yeah, and I think right, the more the more healthy he gets, the you know, right. And I think this is just a boost of confidence, knowing that hey, that he he got this opportunity. He has helped this team win, you right. And, that, and you know, I think at the end of the at the press conference at the end of the game, he said he that ball was meant to go to Chicharito. He was trying to go, but it ended up working in his favor, right? Either way, they ended up winning. I think another point on this too. This is the first Galaxy win that they they've they've gotten without Chicharito scoring. And then that and that is big too, right? Because not not everything necessarily needs to fall on Chicharito. Not everything, you know, all these opportunities. Uh, you know, it's good to see a, that they've won a game without Chicharito scoring. Um, but yeah, I think you also wanted to see him score. But I think we 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 finally got a taste of that in in this game. Unfortunately, there was a couple, like I said, the Cabral had an opportunity. I think Chicharito, you know, at, at times had a couple opportunities. Efrain Alvarez had some opportunities. Who who just the ball ended up going wide. But, but what, what were your thoughts on that, like the Galaxy winning without Chicharito scoring? It's something that we can't get used to because I know it's not going to work all the time, especially, you know, uh, it, it was pretty impressive that the Galaxy kept a clean sheet in this one, um, you know, given that Jonathan Bond, who we'll get to later, had to make 12 saves. But it, it, it's great to see. I, I'm not going to say I was necessarily impressed by it because the galaxy only scored one goal and it was not like a goal goal like it was an own goal and all of that so up uh, three points are three points and you got to be happy about that especially in this derby um, but also with uh chicharito not scoring in his last two matches i think he's really gonna have to 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 put something together against seattle on the 19th definitely no I, and i and i completely agree with that alex in the chat has, has, a, has a great comment he says, I hate that we have to break for Nations League. Grand Sir and Cabral looked like they were ready to take the league by storm. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I know I know you had a you had a take on the Nations League and I, and I saw your video and I, and I, and I think it, it's right on. I mean, for the Nations League, right? Doesn't make sense. We don't need to hit too much on it, but yeah, it's unfortunate that that that's the reason that that we have to break for. But uh, but I mean, there's also other things going on. Um the good the good thing about the Nations League though is that other teams are having World Cup qualifying mm -hmm. games during this time, right? And then like uh, Sebastian Legette is going to be missing a couple games, so that that's that's the good thing of this, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know there's a couple a couple teams, a couple players around the league that are also going to be missing, so that's the only benefit that I see obviously in this. Um, they are going to be back June nineteenth, and that and that's 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 when we're going to see them uh, uh, against um against the Seattle Sounders. Let, let's talk about Jonathan Dos Santos. Um, Unfortunately, you know, I know he he's he has that cramp issue, and I think he he talked about it one time in a, in a press call that it's it's genetics and stuff. You hate to see this happen. You hate you hate to see him go go out from a cramp. But we've seen this before. It's unfortunate, but we just for him being in his contract year, you just want him to be able to stay as healthy as he can. And I think the only benefit of this happening now is that they're going to be off for essentially like almost three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. But what what are your thoughts on, on these? consistently injuries that happen with Jonathan Dos Santos. It's something the galaxy are used to with Dos Santos brothers, <laughs> first of all. Um, but with Jonah, it, it just sucks because we know that when he's fully fit and healthy, that he is the best central midfielder in MLS. And we just haven't seen that in over a year now. And I want it to get better and hopefully it will. But on the bright side of things, if he is missing time, I'm more confident in the Galaxy's depth than I have been in a very long time. I think Adam Saldana is doing a very excellent job. Carlos Harvey's pretty okay. Um, he he could get the job done defensively at least. And that that that's the positive to the decline of Jonah. I just really hope that like this decline isn't a certain thing and that like he'll be able to at least reach some sort of form again. Cause I I mean I haven't complained about him as much as some of the other Galaxy fans have because, you know, when the team's winning, I don't really have a problem with the player not playing up to par. Um, but it, it, it's tough. Yeah. No, it is. Um, Jonathan has a great question. He actually directed this at me. He says, Gio, at this stage, where do you see the Galaxy standing by the end of the season? Do you see them potentially being competitive enough for a title run? Um Oh, uh, any time that the team is doing great, right there. I think. Let me bring up the standings right now. I think they. I believe they're at number three. So they they stand right now, number three with fifteen points, uh, and in seven games, it's very impressive, right? No, no one outside of the galaxy essentially saw this because we didn't know about Chicharito the start of the year, right? Uh, the Galaxy are, are a real team. 
uh, they're they're a real team. I just want to see more of them. I want to see Grand Sir be dominant uh, on the wing. I want to see what we talked about earlier. Kevin Cabral score a couple goals. Chicharito keep doing his thing. But I think the biggest thing for the LA Galaxy, if, if you're going to talk about a title run, is the defense, right? And giving up those goals and giving up those goals opportunities because in order to get that deep, y- your back line has to be solid, right? And it, w- we haven't talked about Jonathan Bond, the amazing job he's done and he's did, but like a goalkeeper shouldn't necessarily have to have that many saves, right? <laughs> like you're right. He shouldn't, but like, thank God for Jonathan Bond, right? If you're the LA Galaxy. Yes, I can see the Galaxy doing that, but I need to see more, right? Mm-hmm. I, if they're doing everything right so far, I don't think they're just yet yet this season, but if, if they clean up the the on the second half of the season on the defensive which, which i assuming they will they're gonna get they're gonna add a couple more french pieces and stuff if you mm-hmm. clean up that those back pieces and then, then it makes sense because you look if we look at the standings again you got seattle with 18 points you know we know how how, how aggressive they can be we know what brian smith can do uh, sporting kansas city we know what the job they've been doing san jose again obviously we, we got to mention lfc but if you're able to clean up on the defensive end some of the some of the mishaps, some of those uh the counterattacks on those different things, then you're talking about a serious galaxy team, right? If Cabral, if Grand Sur is is fully healthy, Chicharito doing what he's doing, you know, you you get Lejet in there, you get that midfield really solid, you get the defense really solid, right? If whenever Derek Williams ends up coming back and stuff. But I think the defense is gonna be the biggest key when you talk about a title run. They say defense wins championships. And for the Galaxy, well, I don't think it'll be their defense winning them the MLS Cup. It might be the make or break thing for them. So I agree for sure. No, great question. It's, it's very early right now, but 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 great question, Jonathan. I we still need to see more. Um, but let, let's let's talk about Jonathan. Let's talk about Jonathan Bond, right? Amazing, uh-huh. amazing performance. He did what he had to do. Obviously, he was player of the game. I was calling him a brick wall. Everybody else was calling him a brick wall. I got some highlights that, that I want to show here. Oh, yeah. um, and I think I, I just love this one here. It's about like 10 seconds. To this second half, and we'll learn every bit of their plaudits. Wow. He is absolutely inspired. And just look at that. So that highlight that I showed, it was, it was a double save that he had uh, against San Jose. And the best thing about that, we're watching your video, is uh, Pilato I made as like, uh, uh, his 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 uh, made us just face right, and in the the way he grabs his face, and you can't believe it. Um, but when I saw that, Eli, you were there. What were your thoughts on that? I was like, this is going in. I mean, I basically saw that play from the camera angle. We saw I was at row B of one fifteen, so I was right there seeing it in front of my eyes. My friend and I, like, we couldn't. Br- we we like our hearts stopped for a second as we watched that happening because we were like this is the one one tie right here and jonathan bond the reflexes the instincts better than any goalkeeper the galaxy have had honestly since kevin hartman back in the early wow, days going I'd, back. Say, That's I'd big. say jonathan bond is looking better than jaime Pinedo. He's looking better than Donovan Ricketts. And maybe I'm just being a little delusional or maybe it's just my memory bias, my recency bias here. But, I mean, Galaxy fans should be very hyped about Jonathan Bond and the fact that he won Player of the Week this week. Deservedly so. I mean, it's great. And the Galaxy would not have won this match or even drew this match um, with David Bingham in the net. Yeah, no, that's 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 another thing that people bring up, right? If if this was, you know, we hate to say this, but if this was the goalkeeper last season, it probably the the power, probably the Galaxy didn't win, wouldn't have won this game because this game literally came down to Jonathan Bond and and making mm-hmm. some saves that you didn't think he 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 was necessarily going to get there. Another thing too is he got a clean sheet, like he earned this victory, he earned that clean sheet, and at, at the end of the game, he you know credits his defense, he credits the defense. He's he said like right, he says like, hey, they played really well, they they did a great job, right, like. We, I wasn't necessarily thinking that because I was like, man, they're letting so many shots. But like in his eyes, and this is what he's saying, he's a very humble player. But I, I mean, he, he's saying this about his teammates, right? And I should also add, uh, I should also mention, I know Reese talks about, you know, Jorge Villafaña having a monster game. Araujo and, and uh, Villafaña have been great, but I just feel like defensive as a unit. That's that's where they they they've lacked at times. But going back to Jonathan Bond, yeah, the the reflexes and, and just being putting this essentially the team on his back, right? Putting the team on his back. Either I don't know if it was San Jose, which is not able to make him, 
or Jonathan Bond literally – I'm more on Jonathan Bond being there at the right time, at the right place, diving, getting up there, and making those saves because, I mean, some of those saves, I was like, I don't I don't know how he got there. I literally don't know how he got there. Mm-hmm. And he rightfully – so he deserved player of the week uh, this week because of what the job he's done. And now he's going to get the rec- recognition nationally, right? We we see him every week. I see him every week. Uh-huh. And, the, and the stats don't tell the whole story with Jonathan Bond, right? All those goals I, – I, I, there's – this is the first time I've ever felt like the, all the goals I've been against him, you you can't count on the keeper because of, the, unfortunately, the defensive mishaps and stuff or whatever you name it. But this was Jonathan Bond game, and I feel like he had it in, in his mind that, like, yo, after all these goals, I don't want to have any more goals scored on before we go on this break. But it, it was amazing. I got a quick video of him. I got to ask him, hey, what are your thoughts uh, on people calling you a brick wall? And here's a video. What's your thoughts on being called a brick wall? Yeah, it's nice. You see other keepers getting called it on social media when they're doing well. So uh, it's nice that everyone says that about me now. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, very humble guy. What, what are your thoughts on that, Eli? I mean, he deserves the title. But also, what a gem the Galaxy found in Jonathan Bond. Because he was a third string keeper for West Brom. How did they find him? How did they get him? And how did they just know that he'd be this insane of a goalkeeper? And also, the people at LAFC need to take some notes for signing goalkeepers. But uh, this was this was awesome. And you know, I, I, I love watching him. I saw I've seen a couple TikToks with him. Uh, it, he he seems to be loving living in LA and being part of the Galaxy. And when someone loves being a part of the club, I mean, and also plays very well for the club, I mean, the fans just go head over heels over him and i mean he deserves he deserves all of the recognition and accolades he's gotten for sure yeah he, he, he definitely does and you can see he obviously he's a, he's a home guy he's coming back he's coming to la right he's still he's still trying to get 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 to accustomed to the city but like i mean this is a great way that everybody's just gonna embrace you with them open arms when, when you're doing when you're having a game like this and like i said you're putting you're putting the team on your back and you know he he's he look when he plays he, he's having fun right he doesn't feel like down or anything like that like he i feel like he's an, an added you know an added like you said you called him a gem but like there's just more to jonathan bomb than just being this goalkeeper and being the vocal leader and everything mm-hmm. he, he does with his teammates and stuff and it, it's it's great that you know a year from a year ago this team was not the same team right and now mm-hmm. you, you it's a completely different team under greg vanny and, and the job that he's done and I, you know i think it can only get better from here, right? I think if you're the Galaxy, you don't want to let any more goals. You don't want to put Jonathan Bond in that situation to have to make 12 saves. But if he has to, he's he's going to do the job. But I think you're going to want to limit limit the other team's opportunities, right? And I think that that's going to go back to the defense and, and the job that they will have to do to tie things up. No, for sure. And, you know, like we, we look back at it and, you know, like in 2019, David Bingham was one of the leaders, if not the leader in saves. And like I called it a fluke because I didn't really think David Bingham was that good. But it's different. It just feels different with Jonathan Bond in the net. I feel an impact, more of an impact from him and more more talent from him for sure. So this is all very exciting because, you know, sure, it doesn't fix the entire back line by having a good goalkeeper, but it definitely improves it in a way. And I think that's the big thing here. And very excited um, for him. And maybe, you know, he could, this is far down the line, but work up to a goalkeeper of the year or something, MLS best 11, get him to there because I think he can be that guy for the Galaxy. Yeah, and I think I think the only thing that would hurt him is the goals that he he's, he's given up. But, I mean, if LA Galaxy move up the leaderboard, they're number one. Uh, you know, then then I, I feel like he has a great. But to me, so far the team, the only teams that I've seen are the goalkeepers of the teams LA have seen, LA Galaxy have played. But to me, so far within those teams that I've seen, to me, Jonathan Bond is the best keeper. I know you watch more of them, unless you, you cover as a whole. But I, just just the, just those abilities that he has, and he's he's been able to do it and contribute that way. Uh, it's very exciting, and we I just want to see how he finishes off the year. Albert Morales has a great question. He's like, is Jonathan Bond here for the long run? If he keeps his performance, would he take an offer uh, offer back to Europe or, or the Premier League? Um, I, I mean, he's the number one guy here, right? He, he's the number one guy. So I don't I don't necessarily 
see that right now but if he if he has aspirations to go back and stuff i think he was asked about i think he might have been asked about that if i if i remember correctly but i think his goal is to be with the galaxy as of right now right he hasn't talked to i mean he just came back for from being a third string quarterback to being the number one guy and proven you know proven his worth to me he's the long-term long-term goalkeeper as of right now unless uh, unless something changes and say a uh, big european team wants to have him but for me he's a long-term option for the galaxy eli uh no 100 percent. and like i mentioned earlier he seems to want to be here and i think that's the most important thing for the galaxy and also one of the beautiful things about the la galaxy being the la galaxy is they're the club everyone wants to play for when they come to mls and i think you know, if he finds some success with the Galaxy, why would he want to go back and have to fight for a starting spot somewhere when he is going to be the beloved figure here in Los Angeles, the best city in the world? Biased, but also not biased. I mean, there's, <laughs> there, there's no reason for him to want to leave. Um, if the Galaxy are playing well, he's playing well. Um, who, who, who cares about some offer to maybe sit on the bench at Newcastle, you know? Yeah, I, I think that that question's a little too early, but I think uh, for him to want him to go back when he just got here, I think I think he's really going to want to make his mark in the MLS before any other opportunities, and, and I think that's that's the route you want. And you know, I think that's I think that's that's the option that you want. I mean, not even even a season in, but it, I mean, it's very exciting, right? He he can he can only get he can only get better from here. You know, you can just get once the once the fans are able to be there June nineteenth at full capacity, which I'm assuming everybody's going to be there because it's a big game. It's against the Seattle Sounders, you know, and be able to perf perform in front of the, a fully packed crowd. You know, everybody can embrace them. Everybody you know can see he, what he's been able to do up front in person. It's going to be exciting, and just I think the more games he gets in, the more he's going to. I mean, if he already doesn't feel welcome from all the social media, you know, awesome memes and images that they that they've created that I've seen. I've seen him on a candle. Yeah, you know, I've seen him so many different things. Like you know, he's feeling the love, and, he, and rightfully so. As long as he keeps doing that, he does. He deserves all the praise. No, one hundred percent. I agree, and yeah, I mean, I, I I got I love him. I mean, he he's got my support at least. Yeah. And I, I hope everyone else is. Yeah, another another guy I want to talk about uh, is Victor Vasquez. Um, you know, he he got to play in this game. And I think that was big because he had been dealing, I believe, with a groin in, in injury. Um, and he came in in the 63rd minute for, for Efren Alvarez. Um, what were your thoughts on him, you know, getting back to play, playing? Obviously, you know, he had somewhat of an impact. But what were your thoughts on Victor Vasquez coming into this game? He always blows my mind when he's on the pitch, the way he handles the ball with, at his feet, uh, the way he finds passes and tight spaces. And I, I, if I'm mis or correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he played a part in that grand seer goal. I think the ball was up top and he, he did some sort of movement with his feet and then kicked it out wide. And I was just blown away by that that might have been just a different play um but either way his impact was felt and he will start again in the in the coming weeks i'm sure he'll be back in the lineup by june 19th and i, I, I mean I, I love him and speaking of guys who wants to be here no one is happier to be a part of the la galaxy than victor vasquez playing with his former coach greg vanney so I, I i think he has the fan support as well he definitely has my support and he's just looked excellent. Yeah, and I, I think that the thing about him, right, is is we know what he's been able to do offensively for this team. And I think if he's just able to stay right healthy and, and do all the things, because he already knows the system. He already knows his place in the system. He already knows how to get the best out of the system with the players around him, right? I think the only thing is, right, is if he's able not if he's able to stay healthy. And the same thing with with Jonathan Dos Santos, because those are going to be key and crucial pieces for the Galaxy moving down down the line moving forward. Um, because if they want to do make make a deep run, which you know, which we were asked about earlier, that's going to come down to. I, I feel like he's going to be a, a key piece, whether he's on the bench or I mean, he starts or comes off the bench, because he he's in a, a one pass one pass he can make the difference, right? One pass to Chicharito, mm -hmm. one pass to Kevin Cabral, 
one one pass to Cranston, it, it makes it makes all the difference. And I think that that's what you want to see. Another player that I didn't hit on earlier, I want to talk about was Jordan Araujo. Uh, mm-hmm. He 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 had a big game. Guys, if you guys have questions, make sure to drop them in the chat. But Jordan Araujo and, and the performances he's had the last few games is is a type of the is the type of games that we 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 wanted to see Jordan Araujo. And I think we're really starting to see Jordan Araujo mature. And he, not just that, I think Greg Vanny and his coaching staff has done a great job helping him uh, on on how to be better tactically when it comes to defense. Uh, because I think Greg Vanny had mentioned that sometimes he wants to push up, but they're like, let's focus on the defense first, and then we'll focus on the offense. And I think that's them him set, being able to separate those two for or make it more clear for Jonathan, uh, I mean, Joe Naranjo to understand has, has been a great thing. What were your thoughts on him? I mean, as Alex mentioned in the chat earlier, the defensive play from the fullbacks this season has been fantastic. And I think specifically in the San Jose match, I saw both of them play very well, uh, Julian and Jorge Villafania. And like, like I mentioned last time I was on here, ever since his mishaps in the U, at the U-20 um, qualifiers, he's been fantastic for the Galaxy in terms of tracking back getting the ball back. He's made some beautiful tackles um, in very dangerous areas as well. So he, 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 he'll take the risk, but also it it pays off for him more times than not. And it's great to see his youthful energy out there. And, he he's amongst the best in the league too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we could be seeing the final season. I'm assuming we could be seeing the final season, but with Jonah Rajo, uh, obviously, you know, with the job, if he keeps getting better and better, it, it's just gonna, it's, it's gonna boost his 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 market value up, and it's gonna boost you know the galaxies, you know, market depending right. We know we know how attractive uh, U.S. men's players are right now, especially now you add Christian Pulisic right running running the the Champions League, so it, it gets even better. Albert has a great question um which i don't think we know the answer to but we'll talk about it he says do you see ryan uh ravelson the the, the new french player and victor vasix pair up or ryan and dos santos what happens with legit who goes to the bench i mean th- i mean that talk about a problem to have <laughs> a great problem to have right if, if you're greg vanny i haven't seen uh ryan play I'm assuming he's be good. I don't know what his form is or anything like that, but I think initially, to me, he's going to come off the bench. Initially, where, where he's going to come off the bench and then get his feet wet, just kind of like what we saw with Cabral. First game, he comes off the bench, um, unless he's already game fit and everything like that. But I think he has to get a, accustomed to to Greg Vanny's system and then the job they're doing. Comes off the bench, and I think second game he comes in. Now, if, if Victor Vasquez is healthy and Jonathan Dos Santos is healthy, I mean. It's 50 50, right? But I, but, but if I think which player gives you the most, right? I, you can't be mad, but I think Jonathan Dos Santos is a starter. Um, and, he, and I think he's going to want to be the starter. So I think I could see the Jonathan Dos Santos pairing uh, first. Um, legit, if he keeps doing the stuff that he's doing with the U.S. Men's National Team, it's kind of hard to you know to take him off, right? So I think it's uh, he, Greg Van is going to have to be very creative with there, and obviously Efrain Alvarez and on all the pieces that are going to be there. It's a good problem to have, but right now I, I would say and this is very early. Say I would say you know Jonathan Dos Santos and, and Ryan first, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to go a different route here because I think if Jonah does continue this downward trend we see him in and we've mentioned the injuries and stuff ryan's just gonna play his spot he is a defensive midfielder he's not gonna take victor vasquez's spot or one of the wingers spots um so there's really only two places we're gonna see him play either with jonah dos santos or taking jonah dos santos's spot but in that line and i do think he'll start off the bench at first but you know adding another french communicator in there for guys like cabral and grand Sier, it's gonna be great for them and I, I, I got to imagine we'd see all three of the French guys play at once. Uh, if, if, you know, Ryan is up to form, I think we're going to see also Grand Seer and Cabral in the starting lineup as well. Maybe it wouldn't be the case otherwise. Um, but Sebastian Legette's a starter. He's going to start no matter what the situation is. I can't imagine a Galaxy lineup um, with him there and him not actually playing because he is probably the best midfielder the Galaxy have right now. Um, and I, I think he is more of a Sherlock starter than Jonah is at this point, um, even though Jonah is the captain and whatnot. But uh, yeah, well, I think I think that's that's going to be the interesting thing. Um, 
what will happen right because it's like right because you 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 have because it typically what the lineup he came out with the formation was a four two three one and that's typically what greg vanny does right but i think that the only thing is jonah's getting paid two million dollars he's a dp player right so you want to make sure but if, if he's not up to form i'm with you if, if jonathan santos for whatever reason because of his calf injury or anything like that he's if you if he's not up to form then yeah you you have to give someone else uh someone else the opportunity but i think right now I'm I'm gonna stick with that, but Jose has a has a great question. Jose says, "Do you prefer Victor Vasquez at the starting lineup of coming off the bench?" I know another right, another 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 solid question. I think right if he's playing that that attack in mid or you know position where we see right sometimes Efrain Alvarez play, sometimes you know Leggett plays there, right? Um, Victor Vasquez. You got to pick the better of the three, right? The better of the thing you you just talked about. Legit to me, Legit is a starter as well, right? And Legit can move around. He yeah, can definitely move around, right? He could definitely move. But if we assume Grant is gonna be right, Victor Vasquez is gonna be on the. I mean, excuse me, Cabral is gonna be on the left. Um, let's say Ryan and Jonathan dos Santos. There's only one spot, and, and that's that's right. Is that Victor Vasquez? Is that Sebastian Legit? Uh, is that Efrain Alvarez? I think uh, I would. I, I would. I mean, it's it's hard, but like I'm. Victor Vasquez just knows what to do, right? But like, how do you not have Sebastian Legent in there, right? It's it's a great problem to have, but I, I don't know, I don't know. This is this is like a tricky thing because if if, if Victor Vasquez is get, willing to give you, say, sixty minutes or ninety minutes, you know, if he's not fully fit, then I w- I would start Legent and then bring him bring him off the bench, you know. But I don't think there's no wrong answer to this one. I'd like to start Vasquez at the 10 and then have Kleshtan come off the bench. I think that is the better way for the Galaxy. But just the reason why I'm chuckling right now is because if you you told me the Galaxy would have this exact problem last season, I wouldn't believe you because the Galaxy were pretty much screwed if they didn't have their their first choice 11 every single match. Uh, so this is a great problem and it's great to see, uh, but it is still nonetheless a problem and there's going to be a lot of guys hungry for play. But who knows, that might even elevate the quality of play we see on the field if all these guys are trying to fight for their spot and as they should this is this is what you talk about being a great team that every position there's competition at and this is what mm-hmm. greg vanny has done he's done a great job i mean outside of maybe goalkeeping which is i'm a, a, a sure lock but i mean every every spot without outside of goalkeeping and maybe chicharito the, the number nine uh is essentially spoken for but every every job every person has to fight for the job and that's what you want to see uh, on on a, on a team like this, and that's what you want to see, right? Having to make those decisions, Greg Vanny having to, you know, be like, okay, who who we're gonna go with, right? Because uh, you have so much depth, right? And that we, like I said, it's a good problem to have. Galaxy didn't have this problem last year, and that goes all credit to Greg Vanny and bringing pieces in, right? Like bring all, bring in Cabral, bring in, bring in Ryan, and you know, going to France and getting the French players. Which, by the way, France looks like I mean they're gonna be solid for like the next two, three World Cups there, you know, with all the young talent that they have. But, I mean, it, like well, like I said, I think all the credit has to go great with Greg Vanny, how he's been – how he was able to turn around this team so quick. Are you asking me? Because, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I mean, he is – the way I mean, it's just the, there's just a different energy, and I don't know what it is, and I I can't really pinpoint what exactly Greg Vanny has done to change it, but everything just feels different. Even being at a Galaxy match as a fan feels different. This team has more fight in them than we've seen in a very long time. More talent on the roster. The scouting department is doing an excellent job because I was worried when I saw the Galaxy drop like five mil to on a 21 year old French winger in the second division of France in Cabral, but he's looked excellent. And just the, the, the organization is the best put together they've been in a very long time. And it's given me hopes that the galaxy could get back to that MLS cup level. Yeah. Uh, we have a great question here brought by Andrew or comment, uh, Andrew uh, Alicena. He says, I think we will know more about Greg's first 11 when he puts out the lineup against Seattle. Amen. I, yeah. I, I'm with you there, right? Because yeah, if everybody's healthy, if you assume outside of Derek Williams, I would say, because we know Derek Williams is probably not going to play that game and maybe a couple more, and yeah. rightfully so. But, um, you know, outside of Derek Williams, who I believe I know I, I know he's a starter, we are going to see, you know, Greg Vanny's starting 11, especially in that midfield, right? Who who is yeah. Who his number one choice is, right? And for whatever reason, his number one choice right there in that midfield isn't able to do it. A, 
you know, or two A, A, B, or whatever, A, B, C is not a bad option. And I think mm -hmm. we're, we're going to start to see see that even more. Alvar, Alvar Morales says, Vanny and DTK have said that they're still pushing for one more player. What position do you think this is? More defense? I don't know. Let, let, let's talk about it. What, what, are, what are your thoughts? I mean, they're, they're, they're deep. Um, they're, we know they, they, gotten, uh, they got depth. At, they've gotten to add, uh, that added center backs. Right back, they got O'Neill Fisher. Left back, um, I don't know. I don't Danny know. Daniel Acosta, who hasn't Daniel played Costa. yet, but hasn't I want to see him make his debut. I've been waiting for that. Wow, I don't think I don't think the Galaxy need to sign another player. Is that weird for me to say? I just don't feel like there's room for another guy, even in the 18 right now, because I think we're we're, we're we have the solid depth. I'm sure maybe another backup striker could be cool. Um, unless you want a long-term starting option at right back because Julian Araujo could be on the move. That, you, got that, a, you got O'Neal Fisher for that, though. You know, yeah, but I don't know if he's long-term starter quality. I think he's just a great plug off the bench um, in terms of his quality. But like, I, I can't really pinpoint a position that the Galaxy need. Maybe a long-term number 10 because Victor Vasquez probably won't be the guy. Um, for many more years and you know clash Dan's old i don't really see Ephra as that guy i think maybe he he'll play out wide or something else um, but i don't really think the galaxy need to go after another guy unless the player that you're talking about was uh ryan the french guy um yeah i don't i don't know i have i gotta i gotta double check but he said he said what position they said that they're still pushing for one more player and if that is true if that if that they are um if they are pushing one more player i'm gonna just go out and say just, just go on a limb. I would say potentially left back, potentially, you know, because if that if that is true, if they if they are pushing for for another player, uh, but the the thing that I like about that is they're so aggressive. They're they're, they're number three in the stands. They got fifteen points, and then they're not letting up. They they want to add more pieces. They they want to get this team better. They they want to add all these different additions, and I, and I think this is what you want to see when when it comes to the galaxy. This is what the standard that it sh always should be when it comes. When, when it comes for, for the LA Galaxy, and when you come to play for a team of Los Angeles, and I like that Greg Vanny has been able to do do that. Uh, the commercial underground says DTK is also scouting for next season. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like that. He could also be scouting for next season. Could be, you know, scouting for the for the future of the club. That I think you always have to have to do that. Uh -huh. um, great question from Ed. He says, "What? It, oh, let me pull this up. What if they let go RDP and Dos Santos? Who could see you take that spot? I mean." The possibilities are endless there. Eh? What are, what are your thoughts? I know this is early, uh, but what are your thoughts if, uh, if that DP spot potentially opens up next season um, for the Galaxy? Well, I think the meta in Major League Soccer is to sign a DP 10 from Argentina, Spain, or Mexico. So I'd say the Galaxy should lo look at that um, as the potential DP guy. Maybe if they could bring back Jonah Dos Santos on a TAM deal or any version of a smaller deal that would be fine um but that that's ideally what i would go for if i were the galaxy because they have a dp striker a dp winger the only thing they're messing they're missing is a dp striker maybe they're messy thing something but uh no um, <laughs> look at you getting creative uh, you getting creative there but uh yeah i i, I would I would probably go for dp 10 and i love victor vasquez but like you can't say that he's going to be our guy uh, two years down the line, even. Yeah, no, no, I would, I would, I would say the same. Uh, a number, a number ten. I mean, if he, the, the opportunities are there. Uh, potentially, you could see a Pavon come back. Who knows? You never, you never know. The, the, the opportunities are endless. Maybe another big name or another name out of France. Uh, another young guy from out of France. We know uh, the Galaxy. Greg Vanny and his coaching staff are doing a great job scouting out there. Uh, you know, so I would I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if for whatever reason uh, Jonathan doesn't doesn't come back on a DP deal that the number the number ten they go for that number ten spot. We'll finish it off with this last question. He says or the last uh, comment here from Albert. He says crazy rumors out there about a return from Al Alessandrini to complete the French connection. He has definitely wants to return and love this stint in LA. Man, yo, if you talk about a player that that has been out there and vocal and loves LA, loves the LA Galaxy, right? And he's made it known on Instagram that he's like, I, I think he went along the lines commenting on a picture. He's like, hey, if you want to add another French player, you know, hit me up or whatever. What, what are your thoughts on Alessandrini coming potentially being linked back to the Galaxy? Do we need him? No. Would I love to see him back? 
Yes, I've wanted to see him back since he left the club because I feel like his time here was cut short. And I do feel that, uh, you know, when he was just coming back from injury when the Galaxy were in the playoffs in 2019 and didn't have the best performance, but, you know, he was definitely looking more like himself again at that time um, because he was injured pretty much all of 2019. And I just feel like we didn't get to see enough of the quality in Roman Alessandrini because he was so excellent his first year with the Galaxy. And I I mean, speaking, uh, you want guys that want to be here and he wants to be here. And I say, why not? He he doesn't have to be an expensive signing or anything. Just bring him back. He's in China right now. Like, he doesn't want to be there. Bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if he's in China, I know he got the bag. He secured the bag. He got, the, he got his money out there. <laughs> Um, right, if he's coming back, he's not coming back, right? As, as a DB player, he's not coming back. On the, I'm assuming he's going to come back for, uh, you know, a veterans minimum or, or whatever. Or, or they make it; they're going to make it work because he wants to come back, right? And if yeah. and if Alan Sandrini comes back, I mean, talking about a guy that's all loves to rep LA, the LA Galaxy, and had a signature, you know, goal scoring move with, with the LA, you know, finger signs and stuff, and, and it would be exciting. And I think if you add him. You know who's able to obviously another translator uh, with uh-huh. Sasha Kleshman talking English and French, and I think I think it would just uh, elevate it even more. Uh, uh, Commercials Ground says he had two assists in the playoffs his last season. His daughter is an American citizen. I mean, that that also pushes it up. I mean, that also adds it. But I think he definitely wants to come back. If he's in China, I, it's time for him to come back. Is the sense that I'm getting from him, and he and he's ready uh, mm-hmm. to come back. No, are the Galaxy going to pull the trigger? We'll see. I think if the numbers make sense, if that, there's an opportunity there, why not? But we'll, we'll have to see. But uh, but with the guys, we're, we're going to wrap up today's show. Unfortunately, Damon wasn't able to join us. I, I know he had to deal with uh, with the personal issue, but hey, that's the way it goes. But I'm glad I had Eli here. Eli, obviously, I know most of the people know you, but where, where can they follow you? Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at this week in MLS. I'm on YouTube figuring out what my next step forward is there. But you know, if you could keep the likes and the the engagement on Instagram, that's where I'm mainly at. So make sure you follow me there. And also I respond to every single DM. So if you have any questions about the galaxy or MLS, feel free to reach out. There you go, guys. So what I got from that, definitely slide into those DMs. You will answer all your questions. Um, yeah, guys, uh, if you guys are listening, join us every Monday night here, on, whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, chime in. You know, we'd like to answer your questions. I'd like to get you guys' thoughts. So if you guys are listening, definitely hop in on Monday nights at 7 p.m. We're talking all things LA Galaxy. And if you guys want to follow me, you can follow me at Joe Garcia LA on Twitter. Make sure to follow LA, LA Soccer Hub on all social media platforms. If you're on YouTube right now, if you're on Facebook, make sure you hit the subscri- subscribe button and you know what, so you get notified. So when we go live, just in case you may forget it. So for Eli, this is Gio. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye, everybody.